Hi everyone and welcome to the Safety Artisan. I'm Simon, your host, and today we've got quite a special subject. I'm going to be talking about safety analysis techniques. And this is a special subject because it's by special request from my friends at the University of Southern California. So thank you to them. And what we're going to be doing in today's session is an overview of these different techniques, their benefits and the, the options that you have for applying techniques in order to come up with a whole program of analysis. So let's explain what I mean by that. So what we're going to hopefully get out of today is after this, you will be able to list and sequence the five types of risk analysis. And it says sequence in inverted commas, because as we'll see, it's not quite as simple as just going through it once in sequence and that's it. We tend to iterate. But anyway, there is a natural sequence to this stuff and, and we'll see what that is. Secondly, you'll be able to describe how these different types of analyses fit together and how they feed each other and complement each other. That's very important if we're going to uh, come up with a, a, a reasonable whole that works. We're going to describe the benefits of each type of analysis, um, provide uh, at least one example of each type of analysis, sometimes more than one. We're going to talk about how you would select analyses to meet your needs when analyzing a specific system because we don't we don't always need to do everything we don't always need to throw everything at our problem some systems um, uh, are, are simpler than others and they don't need the whole works in order to to get a decent result so with that in mind we're going to be able to design an analysis program for different applications or for different systems and finally, we're going to understand the issues that drive the use of techniques and the level of effort or the level of rigor that we need to apply. Now, there's no, um, just to set expectations, there's no magic answer here. I can't tell you that the amount of, of, of hours that you have to spend on a problem is, is x squared plus whatever um i can we can talk about the factors that drive it but i cannot give you a nice cut and dried answer it, it just doesn't work like that so those are the learning objectives so what we're going to talk about we're going to give uh, an overview of the sequence and then i'm going to um i'm going to recap that at the end so don't worry about that. We'll come back to that. And then the five types of analyses we're going to talk about in order are hazard identification, requirements analysis, cause analysis or causal analysis, consequence analysis, and control effectiveness analysis or control identification and effectiveness analysis. And I'm going to talk about a couple of other things during that that help us pull things together. Um, but those are the five main types that, gonna, that I'm going to talk about. So those are the five uh, types of analyses that I said you would be able to list. Now, we've, we've covered off one learning objective already. So I promised you we were going to look at the overview of the sequence. And I think this is what pulls it all together and explains it so powerfully. So the background to this is we've got an accident or mishap sequence, whatever you want to call it. And we start with causes on the left and causes lead to uh, a hazard. And then a hazard can lead to multiple consequences. And that is what the body here is representing it's showing that multiple causes can lead to a single hazard and a single hazard can lead to multiple consequences. So um, don't worry too much about the bow tie. I'm not pushing that as, as a, a in particular. It's, it's a useful technique, but it's not the only one. We'll come on to that. 
So that's that's the background. This is what this is the accident sequence we're trying to discover and understand. And I'm going to talk a lot about discovery and understanding. So typically, we will start with trying to uh, identify hazards. So there are techniques out there that will help us identify hazards associated with a system being used in a specific application uh, or purpose in a specific operating environment. So always bear in mind those three legs of the, the sort of the context that help us to do this. What's the system? What are we using it for? And in what environment? And if we change any of those things, then probably the hazards will change. But we start off doing preliminary hazard identification, which is intended to identify hazards, big, big, you know, uh, arrow pointing at hazards. But also, inevitably, it will identify causes and consequences as well, because it's not always clear what is the hazard when you start off. So talking of discovery, we're going to discover some stuff we may finally classify what we're talking about later. So we're trying to discover hazards. In reality, we're going to discover lots of stuff, but mainly we hope hazards. So that's that's stage one. Now then, we're actually uh, going to step outside of the accident sequence itself. We're going to do some requirements analysis and the um, the requirements analysis has to come after the PHI because some safety requirements are driven by the presence of certain hazards. So if you've got um, a noise hazard, so somebody's hearing might be affected, then regulations in multiple countries are going to require you to do certain things to monitor the noise, let's say, or monitor the effect that it's having on workers and to put in place a program to handle that. So the presence of certain hazards will drive certain requirements for safety controls or, or risk controls. And then there's the broader requirements analysis of what does the law require, what do regulations require, approve codes of practice. We'll get on to that. And one of the things that, that requirements analysis is going to do is give us an initial stab of, well, we, we've got to have certain controls because that we're required to. That's a little bit of an aside right, in, in terms of the sequence, but it's very, very important. So thirdly and fourthly, once we've discovered some hazards, we're going to need to understand what might cause those hazards and therefore how likely is the hazard to exist in particular circumstances and then also uh, thinking about the consequences that might arise from a hazard and once we've explored those we will be in a position to actually capture the risk because we will have some view on likelihood and we will also have some view on severity of consequences from, from considering the consequences. We'll come on to that later. And then finally, having done all those other things, we will be in a position to take a much more systematic look at controls and say, we've got these causes, we've got these hazards, we've got these potential consequences, what do I need to do to control this risk and prevent this accident sequence from playing out? What do I need to put in place to interrupt that accident sequence? And I've put the, uh, the, the controls, you know, the, the dashed lines indicate that we've got barriers to that accident sequence and, and, they, and they're dashed because no control is perfect other than gravity. But of course, if you turn your vehicle upside down, then gravity's working against you. So even gravity isn't foolproof. So no control is 100% is, is effective. So we need to just accept that and, and, and deal with that and understand. It. So there is your overview of the sequence. And I've spent a bit of time talking about that. 
because it is absolutely fundamental to everything we're going to do. But let's move on and start to look at some of these, these individual type 